uh, Marcus, uh, get a microphone, please. You know, Marcus is 42, and he's my newest intern, and he is going to be a future associate evangelist of Global Awakening. There's just one more ahead of him. We've got to launch first. It's kind of like pacing these guys out, and I want to spend some time with him because I really feel that this, 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 this guy's going to be with me for a long time. Uh, I just, just sense that God's done. I want you to listen to him. I can tell you, you've got seven minutes. Tell three stories of his own healings. And then he's going to give his words of knowledge and pray. And then I'm going to come back and give my words of knowledge. God's given me and we'll pray. We'll try this in seven minutes. You remember. All right, so um, I just want to quickly go over these and there's a lot more detail than I know. But I sat in a service just like this where they declared metal to be released in bodies. It was actually Bill Johnson nine years ago. I was in a service, never heard of anybody saying that it could be released in bodies. I had two back surgeries, two um, surgeries to reconstruct my spine. I fell, broke my spine, blew out the disc completely, wasn't able to walk, had nerve damage. They put 14 screws, two metal rods, and a metal plate to hold my spine together. I have a scar that goes from here all the way through and here all the way up that they cut me open. Um, to be constructed. I was completely stiff. I couldn't even put on my own shoes. Um, I do tie my own shoes, so all my shoelaces were just folded inside so I could try to slip them on because I didn't want my wife to have to continue to help me dress. And so Bill called that out, I stood up. And um, I believe in Luke. Does everybody believe what Luke says? That for all things are possible in God. So when he called that out, I was like, God can do anything. So I stood up, felt nothing. It's like, okay, people around me prayed, felt nothing. Bill said, try it out. So I started bending, started moving. I couldn't do that. My wife and kids were freaking out. They're like, he's bending, he's moving. Literally, it changed my complete life. Now I play basketball, I'm on a roller coaster, I do whatever I want. It's done all that. But that wasn't done yet. Um, I love how God loves to restore our lives, right? Um, I, I, it seems like I have a lot of injuries, but you know, I think Satan likes to play the same old games, even though that God's going to take care of it, right? And so, I was born with three kidneys. By the time I was five, yeah, I got an extra kidney, right? That'd be a blessing. By the time I was five, two of the kidneys were not functioning. And so they had to do surgery, they cut me from here to here, and took out two kidneys on the right side, um, and I was septic, I was, on, I was literally dying. I was in a Catholic um, hospital in San Antonio, Texas, my parents had nothing to do with God. And uh, they brought a priest and she did last rites. And said, we're taking the surgery, he's probably not coming out. I spent six months in the hospital trying to recover from five until 32, which was the next night after my metal was released in my back. I had kidney stones every couple months. Every couple months. One of Bill's students called out kidney stones, another word of knowledge, called out kidney stones that night. And the kidney stones, I was dealing with one right then. When you deal with kidney stones constantly, you know when they're bad, you know they're going to be really bad, and you try everything to get rid of them to avoid having to go get treatments at the hospital. Right? So I stood up for kidney stones. I started getting a burning pain, a heat in my back, my lower side where the kidneys are. And it stayed there for a couple hours. And it moved to the other side. It stayed there a couple hours. It stopped having kidney stones. Praise Jesus, right? I was like, my wife and I praise Jesus, no more kidney stones. And I would just praise Jesus for the healing for the kidney stones. But God said, you know what? Even though we don't expect full restoration, He's going to give us full restoration. Four years later, I lived with this for four years without knowing. Four years later, I went in for a test because I, you know, I should know better. I moved the box really quick, and um, I got a hernia uh, for moving the box. So I went in for all the tests, and then you had back surgery, and you get your back checked. So they did MRIs, CAT scans, and doctors coming back in, and she's going over this whole list. I was in the hospital like about four hours on all these tests, and she's going over all this whole list, and she says, Everything looks great on your back. Everything looks great with your appendix. Everything looks great with your kidneys. I said, what? She said, huh? And she walked out and read for an hour or so. She went back and read the films herself. I had two fully functioning kidneys. Which I'm, a, as, I'm like Randy, I like to work a lot. I'm, I'm always going, 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 going. Even up to the hernia surgery, I was working. I sent out a big proposal for government work, but cut it short here. But I went into surgery, I came out dying in pain. 
dying him. I was working, I was in the bed before they wrote me in working. Came out, I couldn't do anything, I was in so much pain. So they did a bunch of they had two more surgeries, <laughs> it's a little short, but two more surgeries. Did a bunch of tests with a, a neurosurgeon, and they came back with that 90% of my femoral nerve was severed in surgery. He said, this is the worst case scenario. He said that you're gonna lose the ability to use your leg. Your knee will start buckling, your quadriceps will fall up on you. And here I am ministering, and I'm seeing cancer heal, I'm seeing bones grow, I'm seeing all this, and I get to the point where I'm on the cane. Then I get to the point where I can put pressure on my leg. I get to the point where it's just painful to even move, and I'm in bed, and pain every day. Dying in pain every day. Screaming in the middle of the night, waking up my wife, freaking out. I was on so much medication, I was on femoral patches, I was on Lyrica, I was on max doses, and they just started to prepare my wife. I said, we are going to have to literally put him in a vegetative state to keep the pain down. We're going to have to drug him up that much and put a drip and put morphine pumps and all that. And I was at that point, anybody ever been at that point? You feel like you're in so much pain you just can't take it anymore? And I prayed this prayer. I literally did. I said, God. And then, and, you know, this, uh, I just was so much pain. My sister and we had the door closed in the bedroom. I want to forget some of these details, but... Uh, my, my family, my kids, they're outside and in mean, Texas. We have barbecues all the time, right? You know, down the south. Um, they don't do in Pennsylvania that much. I'm trying to get them to change. But uh, they're out with a neighborhood barbecue. I'm in bed crying in pain. And I prayed. I said, God, either you kill me or you kill me. I can't do this. I can't do this. And right then, I'm laying in bed crying. And the door opened up to my room. And it's a bright light. Bright as can be. And coming out of that light, I could recognize, I knew who it was. I knew that it was Jesus. I knew he was walking in, he walked into my room, and he walked next to the bed, and he just kneeled right next to the bed. And he says, Pray. And he's praying, and this peace starts coming over me. And the pain's not so bad anymore because this peace is covering me. And he's praying right there, and he gets up and he sits next to me, and I feel the bed move. I don't know how you believe in how this all happened, but God can do anything. I feel the bed move next to me, and he says, I'm interceding for you. I know your pain. I'm here to let you know my peace can sustain you. And he reminded me of John 14, 27, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let the heart be troubled. Do not be afraid. Now, I wasn't healed in that moment, but he told me some other things. I had to make some choices. I had to take some steps of listening, and I did. And one of those choices was to move my whole family from Texas, Pennsylvania, and go to a school even though I couldn't stay and sit or anything. And I did. I made that choice, and I was healed. I'm an actor right there. Let's get this one. As soon as I made that choice, I was healed. So I want you to know that right now, that God not only does He heal pain, He restores from metal, He restores from surgeries, He leads us right where we're at. And the word said, the Holy Spirit and Jesus in the for us. And it's so true. And so I want to I say, if you have chronic pain, if you've been, been dealing with pain and you're just like, I'm just tired of being prayed for, it, I was there. You're dealing with chronic pain. I want to say, stand up if you're dealing with chronic pain right now because I believe God's going to heal with chronic pain. The testimony is also the process of chronic pain. If you need a creative miracle, if you have any organ, it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't have to be just a kidney. God creates all things because he's the one who created you in the mother's womb. If you need a creative miracle, you need a new liver, you need a new kidney, you're dealing with kidney stones, stand up. And, you know, God's going to heal people with kidney stones tonight. If you had a prognosis or a diagnosis that is terminal, that there's no hope. They told me at one point when my kidney was so bad, the only one I had, my blood was so toxic, that I was not a good candidate for kidney, kidney transplant because I had a genetic kidney disorder and that they wouldn't give me one because it would be a waste. But God said, no, there's, that's about what the doctors say. They say that they said I was going to be disabled for a smile. I never did anything. Now, see you walking around, running up the stairs, doing anything. That's because God's going to heal it, right? So you're going to David in here. David, right back there. Were you in a car accident? No pain from it? Because I didn't know if they went together or not, but you dealing with some pain? I got that. You got the neck? Okay, God's going to heal you, David. And then also someone that was in a car accident. I put them to right next to each other. They might have been together. Sometimes we heal things so fast. So then someone that was in a car accident, God's going to heal that. Which means that David back there, you know, you were in a car accident. He gave both of them. 
because they came together, but we weren't sure they went together. So go ahead and take the healing because you got your name. Well, right after I had a big car accident, I had pain in the base of the neck right here. That's constantly, he just said he had pain in the neck, but anybody that has pain in the neck right there, God wants to heal it. The inner side of the right foot, I was getting this pain right in there, inner side of the right foot. All right, so um, pain on the right hand on the outside, right here. Is it, is it constant pain you have that? I don't know what that is. It was not comfortable. Um, older, oh, older, I can get this right, older nerve pain and numbness, and it goes down the arm. It's a big older nerve. You might not even know what the nerve is, but I don't know what it was. All right, there's a couple of those, okay. Now this one is one of those ones that, uh, you know, God challenges us and it's right one right in the same that, you know, hey, will you do anything, say anything? And I was like, okay, yeah, God, I'll do anything, say anything. And then I got this word, pacifier. Does that make sense to anybody? Anybody here? Pacifier? No? Okay. That's right, right? Migraines. You deal with migraines. God's going to heal migraines tonight. Uh, the right wrist. And um, I felt a lot of pain on the inside. Uh, so on the right wrist, you understand that? Alright, jaw popping. I don't know what all this do with jaw popping pain. There we go. Uh, and then I have throat pain, a burning pain in the throat. Okay. And I'm not gonna say that. I, I typed that. You know, autocorrection might be the enemy sometimes, but gluten issues. <laughs> Gluten issues, yeah, gluten issues. I believe God's going to heal the gluten issues. Now. Said kidney stones already. Is there a Cheryl here? Cheryl? Anybody named Cheryl? No? Okay. And then uh, nerve damage. You have any kind of nerve damage. God's going to heal nerves. Um, now I've got this another way. Strange one. This might not be God. It might be me seeing strange pictures, but I saw people mingle. I don't know if something happened with a pink flamingo and means something to anybody? No? Okay. Oh, some great. What's that name? I just curious. Uh, I was going to see the old time when she said one of the senior classes that she didn't want to dance with her. She called pink flamingo. So she said, I'm going to dance with me. So there you go. You know, um, I think that's just for you. Um, that Jesus wanted to encounter you. Just like a little testimony of the encounter with Jesus, he wants to encounter you and he wants to highlight that to you so that there's no way we know that, right? Pink Flamingo, he wants to highlight that to you, that he wants to encounter with you. Pink Flamingo, that's awesome. All right, just a couple more here. Uh, I don't know if these two go together. Um, it could be an address or it could be a date and a, a name or a city. Um, 1218 Roswell. Is the date 1218 or the address 1218 mean anything to anybody? Yes. That's your birthday. That's really kind of a idea. And what, what are you standing for, by the way? What, what um, physical issues do you have? I have back surgery. Back surgery. So God wants to heal you. He wants to meet with you. I believe God's going to give you the huge encounter tonight. Um, Roswell. Does Roswell mean anything to anybody? Roswell. Nobody? Roswell? Okay. And the last one is a football injury. You might be here with a football injury. Yes? This catch 22, or was it the Jersey 22 or something? No, the football. I got, oh, I got catch 22 and football injury. I didn't know they're together, but football injury. So God wants to go here, standing for something else. So. All right, so let's, um, I'm not, what, just with word of knowledge, let's test it out real quick before we pray. Remember. Uh, so you're, you're, God's giving you the word, so try it out. Try to do something. See if it changes if you have the jaw hopping. Try to move your jaw. If you have the back, the pain, the neck pain, try to move it around. Um, try to move it. It's when we take that step of faith that God does things. When I took that step of faith to bend, it, well, I couldn't bend, and I bent, and it's impossible for that metal to bend. That's when God made it bend. He made it jello, whatever he does, right? So just try it out, try it out. And if you get where you're 80% or better, wave both hands in the air and cross them over. What about that? Right here, we got one right here. Anybody else? Anybody feeling, you know, just keep on trying it out. There's got another one right here. Another one right here. There's three. Anybody else? Just keep on trying it out. Keep on trying it out. 
Right. How about you if you're feeling like something's happening, you're feeling heat, you're feeling electricity, you're pe feeling peace come upon you um, like you've never felt before, just put one hand in the air. Just one hand in the air. God's doing something, so we just say, you know what? Just keep on pressing in, just keep on receiving from that. And so I'm going to pray over everybody right now, and I'm going to pray for these things, and then we'll try it out again. All right, Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Father God, that you're here to meet with us, that you're here to meet us right where our need is, Father God, that you're healing chronic pain right now. We command chronic pain to leave the bodies of your people right now in the name of Jesus. We curse pain in the pits of hell, and we proclaim life on the bodies right now. Father, we, we proclaim creative miracles where livers need to be replaced to replace them, where kidneys need to be replaced to replace them, Father God. We command the cells to start growing and reforming in the bodies for creative miracles right now. We just pray right now for anybody with a prognosis or diagnosis um, that's terminal, that we curse that the, the prognosis or diagnosis off their life and we speak life, the life of Jesus Christ in them right now. We, we pray that you just bless David up there to heal David and David down here. We heal people from car accidents, from neck pains, Father, from the uh, pain in the inner right foot, the right hand, the nerve pain. Heal these things right now in the name of Jesus. That all migraines will be cast out. This hell, no more migraines, no more migraines in Jesus' name. No more pain in Jesus' name right now. We just thank you, Lord. Thank you that you're, you're going to meet and touch the painful man go where she's at. But you're going to meet and touch her. And you're going to heal her back. Um, and you're going to heal um, the football injury. We just thank you, Father God, that you're here and you're touching your people. In Jesus' name. So try it out again. And if you're healed or you're just, you know, you, you didn't want to just pray, you can just put your hands up. Um, right back and forth, or just try it out right now. If you have back pain, or you have the metal in the body, you can just move around, move that jaw around, see what God's doing. Give me about 30 seconds. So if you're 80% or better, wave both hands over there, cross them back and forth. Real big. Praise God, praise God. Yeah, there's 13 people just healed. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 14. 